Hey, it's Justine and welcome to Same Brain. I'm missing my other brain, Jenna here, but I just got back from the Apple event this week where the new iPhone 15s, the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Apple Watch Ultra was announced. event, I also got a chance to sit down with Lisa Jackson, who is the Vice President of Environment Policy Social Initiatives, and John Turnus, who's the Vice President of Hardware Engineering at Apple. After all of the environmental announcements that they made during the keynote, I was really interested to learn more about their initiative with their products, because they want to achieve the goal of their entire product lineup being carbon neutral by 2030. That is a huge undertaking, so I was really excited to learn more. So let's hop into the interview with Lisa and John. So you guys had a really big day today. Not only did you launch the iPhone, the Apple Watches, and now that you know USB-C is on the iPhone, I think everyone's very excited. But one of the most exciting things about the presentation was the environmental aspects. So do you guys want to walk through and kind of talk through your initiative for the next few years? Yeah, I'm happy to start. Um, yeah, it is really exciting. So thank you for, for noticing that. And it's the culmination of a lot of work, a lot of a time. You know, I've been at Apple about 10 years and we started environmental work before before I got here, but you know, in 2018, we announced we were running the company on clean energy. And by 2020, we announced that the company was carbon neutral, that our operations day to day, our stores, our buildings, our data centers, no impact on the climate. But then we set this hugely ambitious goal that we call Apple 2030, because by Apple 2030, we want the entire uh, company, every product that we make to also be carbon neutral. And there's two things you have to do to make a product carbon neutral. You have to work with your supply chain to make sure they're all on clean energy, top to bottom. Um, and um, then you also have to end that the energy that our customers use to charge the devices is clean energy. So that means we, we spend a lot of time on clean energy. And then it's really remarkable work on materials, um, which John can talk about as well. So today, you know, for us, the Apple Watch is the culmination. It's a proof point. It's proof that this pledge we made back in 2020 is real. It's, it was incredibly ambitious when we said it. People were kind of like, hmm, don't know. But it's happening. And it's also a promise. You know, it's action, not just words. Now, for product and creation, I mean, there's so much that has to go into this, like you said, supply chain and figuring out different types of designs to make this all work for the environment. So how are you guys kind of thinking about that, first and foremost, for the Apple Watch, since that's your first product that is now carbon neutral, and then going forward, meeting that goal? Yeah, it's it's huge. It's, um, I mean, in some ways, 2030 feels like a long ways away, but sometimes it feels very, very, very soon. Because um, I think, you know, f this is probably the the most ambitious and far-reaching engineering challenge, the challenge that um, many of us will tackle in our careers. Like this is just, it's that hard. And it's that hard because I get to carbon neutral that in a way that doesn't compromise the quality of the product, the reliability of the product, and the overall experience of what makes an Apple product an Apple product. And so to do that, just requires a tremendous amount of innovation on materials and design and, you know, as Lisa said, in the supply chain, how we make things. And so, you know, on this long road to get there, it, today was really special to kind of have this moment of celebration where, you know, we've been able to do it on the watch. We've got a long road to go to get across the other products, but we're going to do it with, the, with a lot of the same things, right? We're going to invest in and in, continue to invest in material design, right? Because one of the best things we can do is not, is to to not be mining, right? To be able to use recycled materials. Um, but you can't just take in recycled material because a lot of times you end up with impurities and other things that impact their performance. And so we have to figure out how do we design new materials that, that can be you know, built out of these recycled streams. And that's just a tremendous amount of work that takes many, many years. But the great thing is, you know, we do something in watch, we can also do it in phone, we can do it in Mac, right? I mean, recycled aluminum we first did in Mac and now we're, you know, we brought it to watch and, and, and other products as well. So so we just have to kind of keep going through all the materials and all the process and work our way there. And you also were talking about reusing different parts of like the Apple Watch band, like threads from previous sport loops. So how's that kind of going to all play out? Because I feel like it does make sense. Like you guys have all of these extra pieces from things that you're already making, and just kind of putting them back into the product. Yeah, I think that's a that's a that's one of the ways we can do it. I mean, you know, one of the things we do in, in materials, you, you, again, going back to aluminum is sometimes when you're making a part, you're, you're cutting away aluminum, you're producing chips. Well, we've built, you know, the the processes to kind of take those trips, chips, recycle them and bring them back into the next product. Um, the yarns, you know, and, and textiles are a great way to do that as well. 
where we have things left over and we can we can build from that. And then it's about expanding our ability to take in even more materials, right? More post-consumer materials and, and refine those in a way that makes them as good as new so that we can make great products. And then moving forward, I mean, what is, I guess, your message to other companies? Like what are you, because I feel like you guys are kind of setting this precedent. So what is your message to them? You can do it. And we have to do it. Um, there is, there are 15 gigawatts of clean energy on grids around the world that Apple's co-invested in with our suppliers and sometimes on our own in order to cover the, the energy needs of our suppliers and the energy needs of our customers. We can do this. Clean energy is cheaper. It can, it can actually, that transition, you can be part of that transition. And many companies already are, but many need to really step up. And the other piece is that the innovation, there, there is no choice between doing well and, and running a business and also taking care of the planet. It's really our responsibility to do so. And part of why we wanted to do this now and make this announcement was to show, yeah, we made a 2030 promise, but we don't want to wait until 2030 to say, OK, done. We want to show the concrete steps that we're taking along the way. And I think, you know, like we hear carbon neutral, but I mean, what does that actually mean for people who may be kind of confused? I think the simplest way to think of it is that the device that you purchase has had no impact on climate change. It hasn't increased the amount of emissions that are causing climate change. And it won't increase the amount of emissions even when you charge it, when you use it. That is, you know, it's part of the the delight that we want our customers to feel when and and the sort of the the ability to say hey i have this device when you choose to to buy one or maybe you're new to apple watch how lucky are you you get to buy a device and not feel bad about any potential impact on the planet. So I guess for the new Apple Watch, I mean, what are some of the things that you guys did to make that carbon neutral? Well, so so one of them is, is materials, right? Recycled materials. So the, the enclosure is made from 100% recycled aluminum. Uh, we use 100% recycled rare earth elements inside. And actually for the first time, this one's really exciting, is 100% recycled cobalt in the batteries. And we did that on the watch and the iPhone as well. So these are things, again, it just gets into, let's let's minimize the amount of new material we're pulling out of the earth and let's reuse what, what we already can get our hands on. Another big part of, of our overall strategy is energy efficiency, right? You know, one of the best things we can do is use less energy in the first place. And energy is this amazing thing because it's it's all win, it's win-win, right? Because if we can make a product more energy efficient, clearly it's better for the planet. It's also just better for the customer, right? Battery life is better. If you think about a Mac, it's it's quiet. It's you know, and and um, and so if you look at the S9 SIP, it's taking you know years of work on our silicon design and continuing to push and create this watch that's incredibly capable. All these new features still gets 18 hours of battery life. So so those are the the great ways to to be able to accomplish this without actually you know as we said before without compromising, right? It was also impressive too that you guys decided to cut out leather which was also, I think, a huge decision because obviously people really do love those leather bands, but what you did moving forward, I think, is is pretty awesome. Yeah, I think the the really cool thing is that is the fine woven um, material. It's not meant to be like leather. It's not like an imitation. It's something else that's new, that has a beautiful feel, that has a beautiful luster. It feels luxurious but without the environmental impact of leather. It does. I was actually so impressed because from far away, you couldn't really tell. Mm -hmm. and then when you actually got up close and you touched, I was like, oh, it's like, it's a very smooth, I'm not really sure how to even explain it. It's yeah. like, yeah. what would you yeah. explain the texture? Like kind of like suede, but like the smooth. And, yeah. yeah it's almost yeah. like kind of silky too. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's nice. So now moving forward, um, what do you see, I guess, the expectation from customers? Because we obviously don't want these environmental impacts to impact the product. And I know you guys said that that's not going to. So, I mean, for you in product, like, how do you make sure that that is maintained? Yeah, I think it's... It it's just become a fundamental part of our process for developing products. So in the very beginning, when we're starting to kind of put together the plan for a product where we're normally thinking about, you know, what's our performance, what's our display technology, camera technology, we're also focusing very much on what is the carbon footprint and, and making sure, you know, our mission and the only way we're going to achieve 2030 is that every product has a lower carbon footprint than its predecessor. We just have to keep marching down this path. And so we track that and we look at, you know, how do we bring the energy down? How do we get in more recycled materials? And so 
by, by treating it as just one of the fundamental parameters of how we build products, I think that's how we ensure that, you know, we don't lose sight of it. And it's also how ensure that we're looking at the overall picture for the product. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. This was so awesome. Is there any last things that you want to add that people might want to know about or be concerned about the future? No, look, I think that uh, today's a milestone and it's a really happy day and we're glad that you can bring it to your um, viewers. But we have more work to do. We also want to remain humble. We wanted to to celebrate this work and then get ready and keep moving through the rest of our products. It really did feel like a celebration because when you watch the keynotes, you have these different product announcements. So it really felt like it was a piece of it. Like it was an actual product announcement yep. today. That's awesome. Cool. Well, yeah. thank you guys so much. Thank Congratulations. This is oh, super thank exciting. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you haven't already, be sure to check out our full podcast channel with me and my sister, Jenna. You can check that out at youtube.com slash same brain. Be sure to subscribe there and also wherever you do listen to podcasts.